Hey Merfolk fans, I'm Joe. Thanks very much for joining me. I'm here with a replay of a single game against Blue-White Control. This replay is intended to highlight uh, a particular interaction, a really cool interaction that happened at the end of this game. The beginning and middle part of the game went pretty much according to plan against Control, uh, nothing that exciting. Uh, I played one or two creatures at a time, trying to apply consistent damage little by little. Uh, force the opponent to one for one us, uh, trading their answers for our threats uh, one at a time. By only putting out one or two creatures at a time, it really reduces the power of um, spells like Supreme Verdict, which can really blow us out if we have like four or five creatures and an empty hand. So yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the beginning went pretty much according to plan. Uh, I was on the play. Uh, this is an excellent opening hand, lots of options. I think the opponent kept 7 as well, so we're just going to open up with Island and Pass. Opponent plays a Celestial Colonnade tapped, so I realized that uh, Dismember is probably not going to be very useful for most of the game, though it uh, could potentially come in handy towards the end, taking them off of one of their win conditions, uh, killing a Celestial Colonnade. Spreading Seas, potentially not that useful. Um, it, it, certainly useful draw, uh, to help us draw a card. Uh, potentially useful again to take the opponent off of uh, one of their win conditions in Celestial Colonnade, 4-4 four, four, uh, Flyer with Vigilance. Uh, using Spreading Seas in the early part of the game against um, white based control decks can be a good idea to take them off of their white mana. Uh, the Wraths like, uh, well Wrath of God and Supreme Verdict both require two white mana and if you ever notice them miss a land drop and see that they're a little bit tight on white mana that can be a, a winning strategy to put Spreading Seas on their white mana. Uh, these Lords though are going to be uh, pretty good since the opponent's probably going to place a number of islands. Drew into a Muta Vault, that's also great against uh, blue uh, white base control because it dodges all of those wrath effects. Okay, easy choice, deploy a Master of the Pearl Trident, opponent just plays an island and passes. Drew a Regery, which is excellent, we really want to just draw threats in this matchup, so... Play Muta Vault, uh, swing with the Master here. Okay, so Blessed Alliance, again just one for one, not too much we can do to play around that. Sacrifice him, and then just follow up with Meruidri. Opponent plays a Hallowed Fountain, untapped, goes down to 18, and Serum Visions. Puts a card on the bottom, a card on the top, so they like their next draw. Two mana up, representing a, potentially another Blessed Alliance. Also representing something like Mana Leak. Uh, I'm going to start uh, here with the two white mana up by... Um, okay, so I have another island in hand. So I can play a Spreading Seas first using Muta Vault and Island. If I draw another Muta Vault, as I mentioned, they're excellent in this matchup, I can then play that again and then play the, uh, the other Spreading Seas. If I don't draw a Muta Vault, I can just play another land and cast the second Spreading Seas anyway. Hoping to dodge a uh, Spell Snare here. Okay, so the opponent lets that one resolve. We've taken uh, the first Celestial Colonnade off, looks like, and uh, drew a Harbinger. So at this point, I feel fine just leaving Mera Regery on the table. Um, I'm going to try to take him off of that second white mana and slow down the opponent's potential wrath effects, as I mentioned a couple times now already. Okay, so in response to that spreading seas, the opponent's going to use the white mana to path to exile Meryl Regery. It gets a land out of my deck, um, increasing the threat density in my uh, potential draws. So, drew a curse catcher. That guy's a threat, even though he's kind of a little threat. Another lord. Things going well for us. I think this turn I'm going to play Curse Catcher and a Lord of Atlantis. Opponent doesn't like that, he's going to mono leak it, nothing I can do about it, so again just sort of trading one for one at this point. Uh, let's see, the opponent's at 18, we're at 20, I've got three cards, he's got four cards, very evenly matched. Um, I've got five lands, he's got four lands, but I do have a Muta Vault while his Celestial Colonnade is currently offline. So let's go ahead and activate that Muta Vault and see if we can get in for some damage. Yep, opponent's down to 16. Another Scry effect with Serum Visions, getting to see a lot of the cards in his deck. He looks like uh, both of those cards, uh, he liked both of those cards, both of the one on the top. Okay, so the opponent casting Spreading Seas on my Muta Vault. Uh, I haven't played a ton against the most recent versions of Blue-White Control, but I did a little bit of research after the match and saw that 
very uniformly, uh, Blue White Control plays a, a full playset of Spreading Seas now, uh, which is, is very interesting. It's obviously it's a great card. I mean, we've played it forever. Uh, but to know that another deck right now, actually, I think Blue White Control is tier one, and if not, it's super close, like the top of tier two. And uh, they also play a playset of Spreading Seas. So, uh, very powerful card, taking me off of my biggest uh, attacker right now. So, uh, both man lands that are on the board right now, currently uh, islands. Opponent played another island, another Serum Vision. Puts a card on the bottom and a card on the top. So they like their next draw. Now Kira, uh, I was very, very happy to see. Uh, they currently only have access to one potential white mana, which means unless they have another land in hand, uh, they're still pretty far away from, or not far away, but they still can't cast a Supreme Verdict or Wrath of God. So at this point, we definitely want to play Kira this turn, and that might just be it for the time being. To, again, not um, give the opponent too much potential value in his board wipes. Okay, so swing with the Curse Catcher. Opponent's going down to 15. It's a really uh, slow drain, just you know, point by point, but that's just how it goes against these decks. Okay. Opponent got a Hallowed Fountain down to 14. Plays a Ghost Quarter, taking me off of um, attacks with another potential Muta Vault. Island. Not super great, uh, but we're evenly matched on cards now. Uh, and I have him at 14 with Akira on board, so feeling pretty good in this spot. Easy decision, just swing with both of these guys. If the opponent... Let's see, options right now, things that could um, be pretty strong against us would be something like a Snapcaster, Blessed Alliance, let's see, or Snapcaster, well, Snapcaster Path doesn't do very much, Snapcaster, Blessed Alliance, um, I guess I could just sack the Curse Catcher, he's not blocking the Kira, so that's not, that's not that scary. I felt pretty comfortable in this attack. Because if the Snapcaster wanted to like block and trade with Curse Catcher, that's not a problem. And my creatures do have protection from Kira. And swinging with two creatures uh, provides a measure of protection against Blessed Alliance. You have to be really, really careful in some matchups. Pretty much any deck that plays white these days, uh, swinging with Kira by herself. Because even though you know it seems like it's you're you're not going to block with her, right? So you should always get in for two damage. But if she's the only creature you're attacking with. Uh, Blessed Alliance just kills her, so it can be a huge blowout. <clears throat> Alright, opponent's down to 11. We're starting to pick up some momentum here. Let's see. End of my turn, the opponent is tapping some mana. Let's see. He's going to return my Spreading Seas and draw a card. It's interesting, because I'm going to get to play the Spreading Seas again, and if he has a Counterspell, he's going to have to waste that Counterspell on my Spreading Seas. He must feel that Kira um, is a threat since she's flying, and he wants to have access to a potential blocker with Celestial Colonnade. Uh, fortunately, I have this Dismember in hand, which uh, might come in handy if the opponent decides to try to block with Kira. Opponent plays another island. These control decks do play a ton of land, so they um, face a risk of flooding out once our hands uh, get down to only a few cards. Okay, opponent plays an island and passes. I draw another land. Uh, so, let's see. Celestial Colonnade takes 5 mana other than itself uh, to be able to activate and block. So the opponent has access to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I decide to open with Spreading Seas. Uh, if the opponent wants to use a Counterspell, uh, that reduces his ability to activate the Celestial Colonnade. Um, if he does have a Counterspell and then still has enough mana to activate and block with Celestial Colonnade, um, he'll have less mana and fewer counter spells than to counter Dismember, which I do want to use on Celestial Colonnade. So, open up with that Spreading Seas. The opponent obviously had a plan when he bounced it, so um, he's going to Spell Snare that. It's rough because I don't get to draw a card, but it, it was all part of the plan, reading into what the opponent's uh, strategy might have been. So he does still have uh, 5 mana left to activate the Colonnade getting ready to uh, act as a blocker. However, as I mentioned, I do have the Dismember, so I'll happily pay 4 life and get rid of the opponent's only threat. I'll proceed uh, to swing for 3, taking the opponent uh, down to 8. We're getting much closer now. I'll play my Wanderwine Hub, and I revealed the Lord of Atlantis. I didn't want to 
reveal Harbinger. Um, I don't really think I'm going to play any of these threats for a little while unless the opponent wipes my board. <clears throat> okay, uh, opponent might think that my white mana is useful, so casting Spreading Seas. I mean, I guess it's the best target right now. Glacial Fortress and pass. Looks like he's flooding out a little bit. Okay, so there's another Harbinger. Uh, that'll make it a little bit easier to um, sort of end step one of these guys uh, to increase the pressure. But as it stands, I'm doing pretty well with these two attackers. Okay, opponent's going with uh, Cryptic, Tap, and Draw. Not much I can do about that, so I'm going to let the opponent basically time walk me, but, you know, we're not going anywhere. It's super slow at this point of the game. So there's another Celestial Colonnade. That's pretty much the equivalent of top de decking a bomb, I guess, in other, <laughs> in other creature-based decks, because it seems to be like the only win condition in this deck. I guess they have Snapcasters, which can attack, but you know if we have some creatures, it's, the Snapcaster's not doing very much. Uh, so it's really um, down to Celestial Colonnades. All right, I decide to end step a Harbinger here. The opponent's down to three cards, so he can't have like an endless supply of cryptic commands. I drew a land for my turn. I'm going to go ahead and attack with all my guys here, presenting uh, five points of damage. So interesting. Uh, I guess they play. I wonder. I don't know if this is typical in blue white lists in the main deck. Secure the wastes. Uh, it does seem pretty good though because they do. They, as I mentioned, they have tons and tons of lands. Eventually, they top deck a secure the wastes and make a ton of little guys. Uh, in this case, though, they're only making five, and if they throw two into the harbinger and one into the curse catcher, it's only going to leave them with two. So uh, not much of a win condition. Much, uh, very much a defensive card right now. I still can't block the Kira, so we're still applying that consistent damage. In situations like this, um, where we could have played a lord and given our merfolk access to island walk and potentially just close out the game with uh, three, two, and two, presenting seven points, bringing the opponent down to one, um, I still think it's correct to keep some threats in hand to be able to rebuild after a board wipe. And Kira is just doing a great job by herself, so uh, I think it's correct to not play the lord. Okay. Opponent down to six, taking two from Kira. Plays another Celestial Colonnade. So they currently have um, one, this uh, previous Celestial Colonnade up as a blocker now. Gonna bring in uh, this Harbinger to pr present more threats with the opponent getting very low on life. Uh, drew a Spreading Seas, which is great because as I mentioned, that Colonnade is uh, threatening to block. Okay, now the opponent's pretty savvy. Uh, they activated Celestial Colonnade in response. Uh, I don't know if everybody's familiar with this um, this interaction, but an activated man land uh, remains a creature once Spreading Seas is put on it. Spreading Seas makes the activation ability go away. Like, uh, once Spreading Seas hits Celestial Colonnade, the text that says, until end of turn, Celestial Colonnade becomes a 4-4 white and blue elemental creature with flying and vigilance, it's still a land. All that text goes away, but it has been activated, turned into a creature, and, and Spreading Seas doesn't turn it uh, off of being a creature. Uh, at the end of the turn, uh, I guess it's called the delayed trigger or something, until end of turn, Celestial Colonnade becomes a 4-4. It, 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 at the end of turn, it still ceases to be a, a creature, but since it has lost its activation text, it can't be activated anymore in the future. So the opponent does have a 4-4 flyer for the turn, which means I can attack with Kira. So again, very savvy play. Drew a Mutavolt, which I'm uh, happy to see, even though the opponent has a Ghost Quarter. It's another threat. It forces the opponent to uh, leave up one of their lands. It is time to play this Lord, uh, because we need Island Walk right now. It's a two-turn clock with Harbinger, and the Lord has uh, protection from spot removal, thanks to Kira. All right, opponent down to three, and I'll play out my Muta Vault, and I'm totally empty-handed at this point. So, Supreme Verdict. <laughs> so at this point, the opponent has his own Colonnade and a Ghost Quarter to answer my Muta Vault. So even though the opponent's at three, uh, he's in the driver's seat for the time being. He plays an Island, and he's down to one card himself. 
Yeah. Master Waves is a pretty good top deck in this situation. I do have two Spreading Seas on the board, which means that uh, Master Blades will bring three Elemental Tokens with him. Opponent uh, plays a Temple of Enlightenment, which means he gets to uh, evaluate the top card, and he leaves it on the top of the deck. Okay, so Detention Sphere, another one-for-one one answer. It does uh, make us both hellbent, so we're both empty-handed at this point. So... He's going to Detention Sphere my Master of Waves, I guess. But he instead Detention Spheres the Elemental. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and just uh, say that was a misclick or just a brain fart. Um, definitely the stupidest play the opponent made in the entire match. Um, yeah, he should have exiled the Master uh, since it would have made the Elementals go away as well. As it stands, he's leaving me with another attacker. Now, if I were to top deck an Island Walk Lord, the opponent's empty handed, I could just play the Island Walk Lord and swing with Master for lethal. Uh, but I drew another Muta Vault, which has, is sort of okay, but the opponent has blocks with Colonnade and, and Ghost Quarter to take me off the other Muta Vault. So, no attacks right now. It looks like we're entering a bit of a holding pattern. The opponent's going to activate Colonnade before I even declare any attacks. A bit of a waste of time. Uh, so, yeah, nothing to do this turn. Supreme Verdict uh, to get rid of a single Master of Waves that could have been dealt with by a single Detention Sphere. Uh, I guess showing the impact of this um, misplay. If he had hit the Master of Waves with the D-Sphere, then um, he could have had a um, Supreme Verdict just sitting in hand for the rest of the game, which would have been, could have potentially been huge. Okay, so draw land. Still can't attack with my Muta Vault. Still just get Ghost Quartered. No reason to play out the, the hub. Cavern of Souls is interesting. So I'll play out the Wanderine hub at this point. But I don't want to play the Cavern of Souls because the opponent might be holding up counter spells. And if he is, uh, he's probably just going to Ghost Quarter my Cavern as soon as I play it. Uh, which then makes the Muta Vault um, live. But as it stood, there was no reason to play out the Cavern and, and give away any more information than I needed to. Alright, so just opponent play to planes, we're both on one card. I draw an island, I'll play that island and pass. Uh, spreading Seas, my Muta Vault. This is an interesting back and forth that we've got going on with, with uh, the Manland hate. Ghost Court is deciding to just uh, pop it now. As you can see, I have very few lands left in my deck. Um, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Only 7 lands left in the deck. 33 cards. So that means 26 out of 33 are live. Well, I guess uh, Ether Vials are pretty poor at this point. Uh, opponent without Ghost Quarters now can't deal with this Cavern of Souls. I assume he's going to activate a Colonnade and attack now. So getting in with Vigilance. Drew an Island Walk Lord, that's something. Potentially some more devotion for a Master of Waves. Path to Exile, pretty good answers. Get that last island out of my deck. Activating Celestial Colonnade and swinging. Now at this point, you know, I'm, I'm basically hoping to draw... Master of Waves, since I've got these Celestial Colonnades. Um, Silver Gill is good because it draws me another card. And gives me a threat. Echoing Truth is interesting uh, because the only permanence that I can bounce right now, I guess I, the Detention Sphere, it's possible that the opponent had um, a reason for hitting my tokens. Basically, it just kills them permanently. If... If he did hit Detention Sphere with, um, if he did hit Master of Waves with Detention Sphere, when I if I bounce Detention Sphere ever or deal with it, then I get the Master of Waves back. But I mean, ninety nine percent of Merfolk decks have no way of dealing with Detention Sphere once it's resolved. Um, I happen to have a single Echoing Truth, but if I bounce Detention Sphere, unless it's on the opponent's end step, he could just play it again and exile my Master again. So, anyhow, uh, just a just a digression thinking about Detention Sphere. Uh, but Bouncing Spreading Seas is pretty uh, fantastic here. I have one of them on a Hallowed Fountain, which I can bounce and redistribute to his other Celestial Colonnade. Uh, 
taking away the uh, the pressure. Uh, bounce the opponent's uh, spreading seas also gives me access to Mutavolt to potentially just win this turn. So main deck Echoing Truth, uh, paying dividends here. Opponent doesn't seem to have counter magic, so I'm going to go ahead and cast one of these spreading seas on uh, the first Celestial Colonnade. Again, being pretty savvy it seems, he activates the Celestial Colonnade in response to have a 4-4 this turn. Well, Island Walk Lord is exactly what I wanted. The opponent is tapped out, and uh, we're going to have two attackers with Mutavault for the win. Since I have the second Spreading Seas, I might as well go ahead and play it on the Celestial Colonnade, see what I draw. Play out the Lord of Atlantis, activate my Mutavault. Go to combat. So an extremely grindy game. Uh, you can see this is turn 18. And the opponent, uh, no options at this point. We've got Island Walk, and the game has ended. So I just, I just thought that was an extremely cool ending to the game, uh, being able to bounce the Spreading Seas with Echoing Truth. With, um, with blue-white control, uh, it seems like it's standard for them to play a full set of Spreading Seas. Uh, my main deck, Echoing Truth, uh, is actually really handy. I took out my Spreading Seas uh, for games two and three. This was game one of the match. Uh, but I think that in the future, I, I took out Echoing Truth also, because it didn't seem like it had a lot of targets. But Spreading Seas is a pretty big part of the opponent's game plan, and if they think that Mutavaults are not a threat, and then really far into the game, I just bounce all of their Spreading Seas and attack with my Mutavaults. Uh, it's, it's a pretty pretty surefire way to just close out a game because uh, as these games go into turns 15, 16, 17, uh, we typically have the opponent at a really low life total and bouncing a bunch of spreading seas uh, to turn on our man lands uh, seems like a winning strategy actually. Uh, it also draws a bunch of cards if we uh, bounce our spreading seas and then replay them. So let me know your thoughts. Is it correct to leave spreading seas in in this matchup uh, to turn off one of their only win conditions in Celestial Colonnade? It also draws us a card, so it's not bad. I mean, we, we typically get to play a ton of lands. They're giving us more lands with Path to Exile. So it doesn't seem like there's much wrong with playing extra cantri uh, cantrips, especially if we leave an Echoing Truth to sort of um, recast our cantrips. What I, one thing I did do in uh, games 2 and 3 is bring in Pything Needle uh, to turn off Celestial Colonnade. I, I currently have three copies of Pything Needle in the sideboard. I did draw it in game three. Um, ultimately, this match ended when the opponent timed out. You can see I have a, um, a slight edge in time right here, 14 minutes to less than 13 and a half. Uh, noticing that at the end of this game, uh, having won the game, I, I pretty much know that I've won the match because there's pretty much zero way that uh, this deck, especially with this pilot, can win two games in 13 minutes. So it ended up timing out. I had like two minutes left on my clock. It's the second consecutive time uh, that I've timed out a blue-white opponent. It seems like you know the deck is just super duper slow. Definitely bring in counter spells. You want to be able to counter uh, Sphinx's Revelation. Uh, that card is really annoying. Timely reinforcements can make a game go longer than it otherwise would need to. You know, if we have something like a couple Mutavaults um, attacking and the opponent plays timely reinforcements. Uh, it's going to slow us down a ton. They gain a bunch of life and block our creatures. So counter spells, Pything Needle, and then I guess Spreading Seas is up for debate. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.